there, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Virginia Arts Waiting in the Wings. Once again, we want to give arts and performance organizations from our region a chance to share the challenges they are facing during this COVID-19 pandemic. But also, we'd like to hear what is working and what plans do they have to continue operating through 2020 and beyond. Today, we're focusing on art galleries and museums, and joining me for the next half hour is Lindsay Alley, Museum Manager of the O. Winston Link Museum, Steve Arbery, Director of the Radford University Art Museum, Janine Culligan, Director of the Eleanor D. Wilson Museum at Hollins University, Talia Logan, Gallery Director of Olin Hall Galleries at Roanoke College, Cindy Peterson, Executive Director of the Taubman Museum of Art, and Barbara Rothermel, Director of the Dara Museum of Art at the University of Lynchburg. Welcome to all of you, and thanks so much for being here. You know, it, it goes without saying that most, if not all of you, closed your doors early on as mandated by our, our governor back in the spring. No people, no revenue. How did you pivot or transition to, uh, to the changes? Um, Steve, let's start with you a little bit, because uh, I know you were very successful in transitioning and you were kind of using your online resources, correct? Yes. Well, what we, we basically just went online. It, it was convenient time wise that the pandemic began right after the, uh, our shows had ended, you know, the spring break. Spring break was extended. And then, of course, we had to go completely online mm -hmm. and no one was allowed on campus. So mm -hmm. we just simply switched our MFA show on our two BFA shows to a totally online experience, which we had gained knowledge from by doing um, Zoom presentations with our MFA candidates when they had to present their thesis work. Mm. And we were heavily Zoom bombed, but it, they got through it and that allowed the university to fix everything so that we were good for the rest of the, of the, of the term. And then by this semester, we do have a full schedule We've just had to make severe adjustments on, you know, openings and how many people can be in the gallery at, that, at the same time. But we worked that out really well. So Great. I've been very pleased with what we've been able to do. Good. And Janine, uh, you as well, because you're at, at Hollins University. How did you pivot? Yeah, well, the students left, you know, right at spring break. And again, like Steve, we put all our exhibitions online. Uh, we had three exhibitions, one dealing with um, Reckoning with Slavery at uh, Hollins, um, also a, a senior show and also a behind the scenes exhibit, a student curated show. So those all went online and we were actually closed throughout the summer. Um, mm -hmm. And so we were doing a lot of online programming. Um, and to kind of add, add to that, we are not open to the public now. Um, mm -hmm. And so we really had to adjust our schedule because many of our, our exhibits, we wanted a wider audience than just a campus uh, audience. And so right now we're only open for students, faculty and staff. And so uh, we kind of changed everything. Um, and I can go into that, but I think you have sure. questions for other people. So. Right, right, right. Talia, kind of the same thing. You are with Rona College. How did things change for you? Yeah, it was kind of it mirrored what uh, Steve and Janine did uh, the last shows that we had. Um, when we closed, uh, we went online. Um, the summers were generally closed. Um, so that's kind of how we did it. But like um, Hollins, we um, don't um have the public access to the public just the campus community okay and then barbara you are with the university of lynchburg how did things change for you again uh, as everyone has been saying we had to rely on internet uh, access and uh, virtual exhibitions we had to cancel our annual student shows uh, they were um the art faculty did develop them as virtual exhibitions, which was great. Uh, we were we remained closed over the summer, uh, but we received permission for some of us to work on campus. Uh, the assistant director uh, was able to work in with the collection all summer, and uh, our uh, programming uh, coordinator developed programs. We did an online children's uh, exhibition in response to COVID that uh, was mm -hmm. great success. And uh, 
developing uh, programs for this fall in conjunction with our current exhibitions. We are open to the public on a limited basis, and uh, we did close on Mondays for more intensive cleaning and uh, have limited attendance, uh, the protocols of mask wearing, social distancing, and so on. So it's been an adjustment, but we have been working with faculty. They've been bringing student groups in. Classes have been uh, working with the gallery for different programming. So um, it's been a change of pace, uh, working from home and not seeing everyone every day certainly mm -hmm. uh, has, has been a challenge. And I think like all of us, just trying to keep up with email uh, is uh, difficult on a day-to-day -day basis, but we're right. adjusting. Right, right, right. Now, Cindy, you and Lindsay, uh, Cindy, you're with Taubman. Lindsay is with the O. Winston Link Museum. Um, Cindy, for you, um, it sounds like you kind of had to sort of take your programs out to the community. People are coming to you. You have to go to them. I'll, I'll go to Lindsay next for this, but how did you kind of do that? That is correct. So we not only shifted to a virtual platform with programming and um, things like in the galleries uh, with Toby, the great art detective, but also with community partners and showing a story with the with the public library or a performance uh, tied to an exhibition, but really meeting the community where they are and drawing them in in a different way. So working with Feeding America, the Rescue Mission, as well as Boys and Girls Club, Southwest Virginia. Virginia. So serving Southwest Virginia uh, with art kits and art cards, also Karelian Hospital for patients and for workers. So, and we continue to do that. So that need is still there. So really reaching that community through over 1,500 art kits and art activities that we are delivering weekly uh, that go up with the pop-up um, food um, trucks and um, into the rescue mission and beyond and um, also the virtual so over 170 videos we've just created this fall that are for the Roanoke City students so that that continues on a on a daily and weekly basis um, going out to the retirement centers and meeting outside and conducting that type of interactive activity um, and bringing art and people together in a new way. Okay, now Lindsay, for you, kind of the same question, but you are you are with O. Winston Lake Museum. You are more specific with, you know, a person and his work, if you will. Mm -hmm. How how have you tried to sort of take that from your under your roof out to everyone else during this time? I mean, basically, like everyone else has mentioned, you just you got to put it put it virtual, put it online. Um, we actually had an exhibit on view, local artist Jimmy Deck. Uh, we had an exhibit here and our curator was able to sort of turn that into sort of a virtual exhibit rather quickly um, just for that one specific show. And then I was able to record a gallery tour. I was doing like a gallery per week through the museum and taking people on a tour that if they were here, you know, it would normally be, you know, what I say and point out and different things. Um, and put that on YouTube so that anyone anywhere could could access it. So yeah, we tried to do a lot of different things that we didn't normally <laughs> uh, do beforehand. So. Well, I'm also curious. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think that's for, for all of us, we've reached new audiences through the virtual offerings that everyone has done. Um, if it's an artist tour, studio tour, collector, or um, in the galleries, and then a broader new audience across the nation now through virtual. Now, I'm curious if you, any of you, uh, I'm sure probably all of you could answer this, but I'm just curious if you had any challenges. You, you sort of suddenly found yourself being your own kind of production company, you know, using what, cell phones or tablets or whatever to get this content out there. Did any of you have any kind of uh, major challenges with that? And how did you overcome it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'll just, sorry, I'll jump in. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Owenston Link Museum staff, I mean, we're a staff of two. I mean, so we're really small staff. So yeah, it was just me with my iPhone walking through the gallery and then trying to figure out how to edit, um, which I did not have large amounts of experience with. And so, you know, we obviously wanted it to look professional and, <laughs> you know, very, very put together. So that was a bit of a learning curve. Um, 
and you think you would have all this time since the museum shut down, but trying to think of content, record this content, edit this content for a, you know, a little 10 minute video was really, that was, it was daunting, um, you know, to try and, and really just be creative and keep churning out, um, you know, a lot of virtual content regularly. We'll have to hold a workshop here at Blue Ridge PBS, help you guys out in that, in that department. <laughs> That'd be great. Please. Please. Uh, yeah. What, uh, you know, some of you in some of the previous shows we've done, I, I, what I find interesting is while all of this has been challenging and you would think that most of you are, oh, what do we do now? You know, you're sort of sitting still. It almost sounds like you're even busier now than you were before COVID because either you're sort of regrouping, you're having to challenge yourself, find new ways of doing things. Is that correct? I yeah. Yes. That's very, very correct. Yeah. Who wants and to talk about that? I think it's even, you know, uh, for the for the Tomlin Museum and the, as, as the pandemic hit and closed our doors, a lot of the exhibitions got shifted a year out or more, just like um, everybody else has been talking about. So even developing six new exhibitions coming up this this fall, newly created, which you know, dives into some of the collaborations. So we worked hand in hand with Janine Culligan um, and as a guest curator for uh, subtle photographs uh, from a private collection, as well as we've been borrowing from institutions here on the on the call, University of Lynchburg, as well as Hollins, uh, for the Daura exhibition that we've um, pulled from our permanent collection. Um, but you know, it, the, it just keeps on going, you know, further and further. The collaborations that need to be strong during that time to really lean on each other for assistance, uh, and also the new exhibition we have to come up with. Yeah, Anybody else want to talk collaboration? Exactly. Yeah, if I can kind of second what Cindy said, we, we've we almost had to plan two separate types of exhibitions because we have all the online programs and exhibitions, but we're still open to students, faculty, and staff here. And we kind of, uh, we, we put the ones into the to next year, the ones that we needed a broader audience, but we changed the museum up thinking about what students, faculty and staff might want. So we like turned one of our galleries into like a third space. We're showing art videos, but we are encouraging people to bring their yoga mats and do yoga and relax in the gallery. And then we one is a kind of a hybrid classroom where we've worked with faculty thinking about what's being taught and then trying to find works from the collection that uh, pertain to those classes. And then one, this is kind of unheard of maybe in the museum world and we probably may not do it again, but we <laughs> turned one gallery into a space where people can just come in and draw on the walls. And that's oh, been that's really great. popular. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so we just kind that's of cool. had to pivot, you know. But, yeah, yeah, so I would say actually, uh, I'm sorry, uh, like Janine, we did have to regroup a bit. We had a temporary exhibition that we had rented and it was a costly endeavor. And we had a discussion among the staff and with the provost of the university that when we're, we're asking students to come back to campus, they should have all of their facilities available on campus. So we did make the decision to go ahead with our temporary exhibitions, one of which uh, was also a senior honors project that a student had curated. Uh, that again was Andara as uh, a refugee. So we went with the refugee theme, if you will, uh, for all of our exhibitions and programming for the fall. And uh, the online programming, the, um, the specific programming relative to uh, classes that are currently being taught. And we relied very, very heavily on social media. We do mm -hmm. social media posts a number of times every week and uh, they have expanded our audience certainly uh, and to have exhibitions and programs as well online so it's been a new type of challenge but uh, uh, we did feel that we needed to keep open um, certainly on a more limited basis we also have mindfulness at the museum on friday afternoons yes. where we actually have uh, some yoga mats available for people and uh, the mindfulness sessions are being uh, facilitated by a different faculty or staff member every, uh, every Friday. So we'll mm -hmm. have one that is uh, 
being done by a member of the community who is a, a Buddhist and by one of the chaplains of the university, just to instill that sense of this is a place to come and relax, to refresh, uh, and still be uh, surrounded by wonderful works of art and uh, part of the campus. Now, I'm also curious because I know that with museums and galleries, usually there are traveling exhibits that, you know, go across the country, even around the world. And if one venue is affected, then I would imagine it has a domino effect to other, you know, museums or venues where that exhibit was going. Um, is, is that, Steve, let's start with you. Is that something you've had to sort of deal with or do you have creative ways to kind of fill those voids? What's happening there? Yeah, it's happened with our, our traveling Dorothy Gillespie show. Uh, one institution just pulled out. Another one has delayed it for another year. Um, and so what it basically what it means is usually one will pay for the shipping to the next. One institution is going to have to you know cover shipping both ways, but they're fairly close. So they'll probably just rent a big van and come get it themselves to, to save mm -hmm. on costs. So it's still going to get to all those places, but on a different kind of timeline and not in the same order. So that it'll work out. Okay. Anybody else have those challenges? And I'll tag on that because we were also showing the Dorothy Gillespie and borrowing from Radford University. Uh, we're able to extend then the exhibition due to that delay that right. Steve was talking about. And so and we opened our doors in July and we're currently open Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays with free general admission. So that enabled then um, an extension of that wonderful exhibition with Dorothy Gillespie. But you're correct. So that it is a ripple effect depending on on which ones and then um, making sure that loans continue or are extended or newly created exhibitions. And uh, we have right now a very anxious feeling uh, from the Beth Woody collection up. So we were you know, able to fast forward an exhibition idea um, that normally would have been out in maybe 2022, 2023. And um, you know, I think that everybody on the call here is very nimble in their ways to adjust and be able to create new exhibitions in a situation like this okay yes, great and so we, i was supposed to have the, the kelly collection beginning in january and that had to be canceled so i'll be showing parts of our permanent collection instead yeah well I'm doing the same i uh, uh we had a temporary exhibition on loan to us and they very generously allowed us to extend it through the semester because we do close november 20th uh, until january so um, we are using strictly uh, our own collection for the spring exhibitions. So I'm finding myself curating three exhibitions as opposed to one, but uh, it will work out. And I'm curious if you have had to rely or, yeah, have you had to rely on more local artists or student artists to sort of uh, help keep, you know, your, your venue open? Well, we um, here at Olin Hall Galleries, uh, we have been working with local artists, but not in regards to having shows. We've been doing virtual workshops. So we've worked with um, Lauren Browning. So what we've been doing is we'll send out an invitation. And so we've had Stitch and Sip where it's a Zoom workshop and we send the materials to them so we have these art kits the next one that's coming up is with amy herzl which is in the moment and she'll be showing people how to do meditative drawing um which has been great and we've also been collaborating with local artists to create art kits that are based upon their studio practice as well as our last one is with a student who does embroidery so she we collaborated with her to help us design a kit that we give out to students mm -hmm. and to the general community yeah what about the artists themselves? Have any of you had any conversations with uh, some of these artists? Kind of how are they? Are, how are they feeling? How are they doing? Are they producing more? Are they producing less? I mean, um, any idea from that standpoint how things are going with artists? I think artists and not that fine too. Yeah, I think artists, you know, are, are so creative and they've come up with ways to deal with not having gallery shows or whatever. They're doing a lot of online uh, work as well. But uh, we did a, a series of um, 
uh, artist alumni from Hollins uh, in their studio. So that's kind of an ongoing uh, program that we're doing. And, you know, everybody is one thing that that the pandemic has allowed uh, some people is just to have more time, uh, whether it's time to think, time to create. And so uh, a lot of artists, you know, are, are really using this time wisely and, and making a lot of work. So. I agree. We've we've started a, a new series called Curated Cribs. So we've been to different artist studios across the country, as well as collectors homes. And kind of that same thing, as Janine said, um, Julie Speed, we have upcoming who was an exhibiting artist and also Paul Valensky that was exhibiting artists. And so we're visiting their studios to see what type of what are they doing now? And Julie, for example, has created a whole new exhibition in her studio as a virtual exhibition and has even produced a catalog to go with it. So I think artists are being creative in, in new ways. So how are each of you using this time to sort of regroup um, and, and move forward? Um, you know, we're, we may be facing more restrictions and moving in phases and also we, we have no idea what the future holds, but how are you using this time to maybe uh, make things better in your world or, or make things more accessible to others? What are you doing during this downtime? Not that it's downtime, but you know what I mean? <laughs> well, what we're doing is because we're having to record so much stuff for virtual tours mm -hmm. and whatnot, this is going to allow us to have much better documentation on our website of shows from this point going forward. So that's a, that's a plus of what we've been having to do all this time. Like for instance, um, for, for the one we just had two exhibitions related to trees, we created a, a, a map path with trees lines so that people could get back and forth and not run into each other. It's very educational. And then now that that show has just ended, I'll just simply take off the references to the two exhibitions and we have a tree trail for the campus that can be used indefinitely. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm, that's oh. great. That's nice. So you always find it's... opportunities in disasters. <laughs> <laughs> Lemonade. Yeah. And, and I think it's, <laughs> sorry, I think it's really highlighted the need for virtual content just no matter what. I mean, you know, here we normally did not do a whole lot of virtual um, sort of content or anything. We did, you know, some social media posts, but nothing like to the extent um, that we have. I mean, we actually have YouTube subscribers now. I mean, we, our channel didn't really have any and now we do because we've been actually producing content. So I think, you know, again, it's, it's a challenge because we are such a small staff here but in order to sort of keep that going and keep creating new different things that people will want to watch and access that might not, you know, be in Roanoke or be able to come here, um, you know, for a certain show or time or something that they can still, you know, visit the museum and still see, you know, what we've got to offer. Yeah, we've got a museum studies program and I have uh, challenged my students to individually in the museum exhibition uh, course to develop their own exhibitions. Uh, we have one that is going to be on the history of video games, one that is on the legend of Mulan, which of course is uh, in keeping with the new film. And uh, also one of the students has done uh, a tour, if you will, uh, of the campus, uh, again, uh, uh, focusing on the nature of the campus, including interviews with the grounds crew. And uh, um, I surprised them last week and informed them that they have two weeks left in the semester and they have to finish these up because they will be going live. All right. Yeah, I, lo I love the fact that some of you might mention something and the rest of you say, oh, that's a great idea. Or, Yay. Or, you know, so I love that. That's the kind of collaboration I really enjoy. I have about two minutes left, so I want to touch with each of you very quickly. What does the future hold for you and how do you keep to keep uh, how do you hope to keep con keep going through 2020 and uh, and beyond? Let's start with you, Lindsay. So I think moving forward, we're just. We're gonna keep trying to bring in new exciting exhibits. Um, 2020 is actually the 250th anniversary of the founding of Botetourt County. And so we had planned this big showstopper exhibit here that was supposed to be on view. And so 
you know, we've had to sort of change our plans. And so 2021, you know, we're looking forward to having that exhibit and just, you know, wow everybody because it's going to be so good. And yeah, I mean, again, just keep creating new things and, and interest for people to, to return. Steve, how about you? Well, I think we're in good shape. Um, we probably won't try and have exhibitions from collections, but from individual artists. And we plan usually two or three years out. And so we have uh, some of our faculty are bringing in like a photographer next year and the year after that, um, an enamelist. And so working with individual artists, that shouldn't be a problem getting them here and their work. We just will have to concentrate on the social distancing aspect. Okay. Talia? I think that, you know, for the next uh, term in the spring, we'll continue to make art kits and do virtual workshops that we offer to the public and to the campus. Um, and in hopes in the fall that we will be able to have the shows that we were going to have up this year to be able to um, showcase those. So, Okay. Cindy? We'll continue with our, our on-site visitations Friday through Sunday and 12 galleries open, as well as the balcony, which is a, a favorite. Uh, we have take and make bags at the front since our high touch art venture area is closed, but we'll continue also with the virtual into the future. As, as we've heard in this conversation today, it is um, it continues to, to reach others. And so virtual tours as well as studio tours um, will continue as as usual as with the community. Janine, quickly. Yeah, for the spring, uh, we'll just focus again on, on student staff, faculty and staff, uh, but we're hoping maybe in the summer uh, we'll be open and like Talia and everyone, uh, in the fall we'll have shows that were scheduled for this year. And Barbara? We are continuing with the plans that we originally had established just changed somewhat uh, with COVID protocols. Otherwise, we are still doing exhibitions. We are still open to the public on a limited basis and always to faculty and staff. We're expanding our online programs and uh, we've created one uh, searchable website on DARA and uh, moving forward with other parts of our collection. And okay. again, my students will be doing work. Okay, great. Lots of plans from all of you. I do want to thank all of you, my guests, for joining me today. All of us here at Blue Ridge PBS wish you well, and we hope this platform has kind of given you an opportunity to connect with your audience. Best of luck as things progress, and thank all of you for joining us as well. We'll see you next time.